I work every day with entrepreneurs, true change agents, and they work inside of government. They work hand in hand with external change agents in a heated race to rewire society for civic data. When electricity was first rolled out across this land, we had to wire the generators of power with the appliances or consumers of power. And as a result, we spent enormous sums of money. And we ultimately wound up with our network of today, the electricity grid. Now, the electricity grid is perhaps the most impactful infrastructure investment of the 20th century. And the 21st century requires another major infrastructure investment to deal with the demands and the potential of civic data. So while we spend large sums of money gathering data, in general, this data remains locked in silos. Put simply, it's not getting where it needs to go. So once we've rewired our data infrastructure so that civic data flows from its sources to its consumers, transformed so that it's safe, standardized, and easily accessible, we'll see a pronounced and positive transformation of society. So governments have historically collected data for primarily operational and internal purposes. For example, salary data is collected by systems whose primary purpose is to ensure that employees get paid. Traffic sensors, like the black tubes that we drive over on our streets, gather data whose primary purpose is to assess road usage. Garbage data is collected by systems that are really trying to make sure that our garbage gets picked up and that we pay for the system. In crime data, it's gathered by systems whose primary purpose is to route the police to us efficiently in an emergency. Now, each of these systems is difficult to access from the outside, and as a result, the data remains largely trapped in information silos. But it turns out that each of these examples of collected data has emerging secondary benefits. For example, expenditures data is published by New York City, Davenport, Iowa, and numerous other cities. This includes the dollar amount and the recipient for every check that they write. Now, in addition to improved efficiencies, these cities have experienced you know, an increased faith in government and an improved civic dialogue. Traffic sensor data, when wired to companies like Google and Apple, help us navigate our cities more efficiently by using our phones. And garbage data is used by Kansas City, for example, in their public performance dashboard. This collected garbage data you know, was used to implement an extended curbside recycling program, in addition to numerous other policy changes. As a result, citizens' behavior is changing, and Kansas City is currently on track to reduce the total amount of garbage it's it produces by over 40%. Now, crime data gathered by the 911 system can be used to visualize emerging crimes on a map, right? or to predict where to send police in the event of a, you know, emergencies before crimes actually happen. In other words, not only can we address crimes which are happening now, but we can predict where crimes are going to happen and prevent them. Now, this rewiring of society requires us to transform data. We have to make it easily accessible, we have to make it safe, and we have to make it standardized or convenient to use. And similarly, data requires a transformation. It has to be transformed from its raw, collected form into a form that's easy for government employees, citizens, and downstream consumers to make use of. For example, data that depicts an incident that occurred at a particular time and place, like a crime, a house fire, or even a rat sighting. It needs to be transformed and stored in a specialized geospatial database so that it can be visualized on a map or analyzed by neighborhood. Now, similarly, if we want to predict where crimes you know, or rat populations are about to suddenly explode, it's essential that we maintain a history of related potential events that are that ha so things that happen at the same time and the same place. For example, 
PredPol is a company that helped the city of Atlanta reduce aggregate crime by 19%. And they did so by leveraging past crime times, locations, and type of infraction. Similarly, every day, the city of Chicago predicts where in the city rat populations are about to suddenly increase. And it turns out, as you might guess, that the time and locations of past overflowing garbage bins is instrumental. Now, as a result of Chicago's predictive approach, where teams in trucks put poison and traps and lay them out in locations throughout the city, has resulted in an incredibly improved situation. Now, the electricity grid, it doesn't just transform and transport electricity, but it does so safely. And similarly, data has to be transformed so that it's safe to use and privacy is a primary concern. For example, when New York City publishes crime data, they publish it at the block level, and this is so that users can't determine the identity of victims using an exact address. Similarly, when sensitive information like health and financial information is published, it has to first be rigorously scrubbed to ensure that individual privacy is protected. Now, when electricity was first rolled out across this land, people thought it would be used primarily for lighting. Right? And as a result, the electric sockets looked like this. Now, soon, the appliance manufacturers all started producing their own electric sockets, and we quickly had far too many of them. Now, eventually, we standardized on our socket of today, and the result was a mass proliferation in appliances. As open government author Sarah Schacht pointed out, civic data also requires standard sockets. So for example, recently, a number of companies and governments collaborated to produce the Lives Restaurant Health Inspection Standard. Now, as a result, data that was originally gathered to better enforce health codes, it flows directly into your pocket when you use Yelp. So when you find out that a restaurant health inspection has failed in the recent past, you might be less likely to go to that restaurant. Now, anyone can have access to this restaurant health inspection data socket. For example, Google, Bing, or Yahoo might put the data alongside their restaurant summaries, making it available to you when you search for your favorite restaurant. So data, it needs to be transported out of these information silos, and it needs to be transported into you know, hands of those who can make a difference. So just as the electricity grid you know, transports electricity from often faraway generators like dams and coal plants you know, into the appliances in our homes, data also requires transport. So let's consider the case of health data about infectious disease. The data typically originates in a hospital where a physician diagnoses a patient with an infectious disease, like whooping cough or the measles. Now, the data then makes its way typically to the county health department and then off to the CDC. Now, before the rewiring of government, this might have been the end of the data's journey. But recently, the CDC has been ensuring a regular flow of this data to outside change agents via a platform built by the company that I work for. Now, as a result, the company Acel Bio was able to power a automatically and regularly updated infectious disease prediction service. So the same data after the rewiring of government has made its way into the hands of a capable change agent, Dr. James Wilson, whose team successfully predicted the outbreak of cholera in Haiti, and they even linked it to a UN source. They also predicted the outbreak of swine flu in Mexico. So as a society, we've saved countless lives by accurately predicting the weather. Imagine how our behavior might change if we knew that an infectious disease outbreak was imminent in our county. Might some of us, for example, reconsider our stance on vaccination? Now, Governments aren't always the source of data. Right? Just as citizens increasingly wire electricity generated from their home rooftop solar panels 
back inside of the electric grid, citizens are increasingly the generators of data, and government is increasingly the consumers. So consider the case of C Click Fix, a startup company that allows you, the citizen, to see a problem, click a photograph, and submit the problem for repair. Now, for cities that have signed on to the service, the data flows directly into their non-emergency systems, where the cities can take prompt action and update the status to the public. As a result, over 1.6 million repairs have been made for problems like broken windows, blocked bike lanes, potholes. Blexting is another application built by volunteers in the city of Detroit to help map urban blight by identifying abandoned or dilapidated properties. Now, armed with this application, these volunteers were able to comb the streets of Detroit, and in just a few short days, they were able to rigorously map the problem. As a result, the city of Detroit can now determine a path forward, and they are via targeted demolition or renovation. So what's the true value of a well-wired infrastructure? North and South Korea provide a stark example. With the exception of Pyongyang and a handful of government enclaves, North Koreans remain literally in the dark. South Korea is well-wired and illuminated brightly. Her, her citizens experience the benefits of modernity, longer lifespans, access to quality health care, freedom of thought, action, and transport. Now, once we rewire society for civic data, I believe we'll see an acceleration in educational access, transportation efficiencies, and numerous other metrics of a healthier society. But first, we have to accelerate and complete the rewiring of society for civic data. We need more government employees, civic change agents, making wiring more data Right? to those who can make, a, make better use of it, both inside and outside of government. We need more civic developers building better applications that empower citizens. And we need more data-driven journalists tapping into this rewired data and improving our civic dialogue, making us better informed. And we need more citizens now better informed, armed with better applications, and more efficiently pushing on the levers of government. In short, we, all of us, need to help rewire society for the 21st century. Thank you.